لا يفقهون وإذا رأيتهم تعجبك أجسامهم وإن يقولوا تسمع لقولهم كأنهم خشب مسندة يحسبون كل صيحة عليهم هم العدو فاحذرهم قاتلهم الله أنا يؤفكون وإذا قيل لهم تعالوا يستغفر لكم رسول الله لو رؤوسهم ورأيتهم يصدون وهم مستكبرون سواء عليهم أستغفرت لهم أم لم تستغفر لهم لن يغفر الله لهم إن الله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين هم الذين يقولون لا تنفقوا على من عند رسول الله حتى ينفضوا ولله خزائن السماوات والأرض ولكن المنافقين لا يفقهون يقولون لئن رجعنا إلى المدينة ليخرجن الأعز منها الأذل ولله العزة ولرسوله وللمؤمنين ولكن المنافقين لا يعلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تلهكم أموالكم ولا أولادكم عن ذكر الله ومن يفعل ذلك فأولئك هم الخاسرون وأنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي أحدكم الموت فيقول رب لولا أخرتني إلى أجل قريب فأصدق وأكم من الصالحين ولن يؤخر الله نفسا إذا جاء أجلها والله خبير بما تعملون Let's begin. Um, for those of you attending this uh, session uh, for the first time, this is the second part of Surah Al-Munafiqun. The first part, the recordings are available, inshallah, in the Al-Manarad website. Inshallah, we can uh, catch up on that. But I'll quickly go over the surah, quickly uh, review a few ayat, and then we'll continue with uh, the ayat for today, the final session of this surah, bi-ibnillahi ta'ala. So this surah, Surah Al-Munafiqun, is talking about mainly the qualities of the hypocrites. And it is generally referring to the qualities of hypocrites, but there is a context, right, in which the surah is revealed. To remind everyone, the context of the surah is when the Prophet Wasallam goes on the expedition of Banu Mustaliq, right? And after that battle was won, on the way back, they, uh, a Sahabi was drinking water, and another Sahabi uh, got into an argument. So they were both, you know, uh, they, they had a small argument and it was a split between Ansar and Muhajir, right? One person brings, calls the Ansars for help. The other one calls the Muhajirs for help. And suddenly there were two camps of Muslims. At that point, the leader of the hypocrites, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, he comes in and he kind of sparks the, you know, the conflict a little bit further uh, and ignites it. And he says, that, you know, did they really do that, right? These muhajir, so he was an Ansari, and if you know about Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul, he was supposed to become the leader in Medina before the Prophet Sallallahu came. He was elected, everything was ready until the Prophet came, everybody, you know, most of the people become Muslim, and so his leadership was not valid anymore, and the entire tribe united with the Prophet Sallallahu So he had this thing against the Muslims generally, right? And so he was looking for opportunities to kind of, you know, destroy Islam from within, you know, uh, you know, um, destroy the Muslims from within, divide the Muslims and all that. So this is one of the incidents uh, that takes place um, in the, in the Sirah. So what happens is when he hears about this conflict, he goes, instead of calming them down, he says that, did they really do that? The Muhajirs of Mecca, the ones who came, they 
did this to us, the Ansars? They have overpowered us. These trash of Quraysh remind me of the old saying, feed your dogs and it will bite you. So he was calling the Quraysh of uh, uh, the, the Muhajirun of Mecca as the dogs, right? And he says, I swear to God, if we go back to Medina, then we will expel them. The dignified ones are going to expel, are going to get rid of the humiliated ones. So, Man, you can stop sharing the screen. Um, inshallah, once you're done with the review, you can start writing the notes. Jazakallah khair. So he then, he turns to those people who are gathered there. He says, this is what you have done to yourself. You have opened up the lands to these people. You uh, shared your money with them. And I swear to God, if you hold back the charity that you keep dropping on them, they would go somewhere else. They are not here for the cause of Islam. They are eating free welfare, calling it fi sabilillah. Right? These are the statements of Abdullah bin Ubayn bin Salul against the Muhajireen. Please, right? I know what they're about, right? They're not here for the cause of Islam. These people are just here for money. When you stop giving them, then they're going to go, they're gonna, they're gonna disperse and they're gonna go and leech off of somebody else. So when he was saying this, uh, a, a, a companion, you can say, uh, by the name of Zaid bin Arqam, he was only nine years old, a kid by the year of nine years old. He comes and tells his uncle about this incident. The uncle tells the Prophet وسلم, about the incident and the Prophet وسلم, you know, he calls Abd Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul asking him, did you, did you say this? And the Prophet وسلم, here, we talk, we went through the background of, you know, hypocrites, who the hypocrites are, can we call anybody hypocrite, all that. But here the Prophet وسلم, he knows that this person is a hypocrite and this person did say that, but he still asked him, right? Did you say this? And at that, he starts swearing. He starts saying, no, wallahi, I would never do that, you know? And then he says, you know, and the Prophet let him go. And then when he leaves, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals Surah Al-Munafiqun, the entire surah describing who the hypocrites are. And this surah is revealed five years after the Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina. So the hypocrites have been harming the Muslims, offending them, and breaking the Muslims apart from within for five years, right? And so these, here Allah brings their quality. So that's where we kind of the context of the surah was. So let's inshallah, let's go through the ayat quickly. Um, ayah number one, Allah says, Ida ja So here are the qualities that we should be looking within ourselves. And we made this clear last time that we don't have the license to call anyone a hypocrite, right? And I started off last time talking about how there's a disease, right? There's a disease that is spreading and everyone is aware of that. And we are so worried about this disease and there are different types of diseases, but the greatest of all, the greatest of all is the disease of hypocrisy. And this is a disease that every Muslim should worry about because the people who have this disease will end up in the lowest level in Jahannam, right? This is seriousness. It's not, it will not just kill us but it will land us in the lowest level in Jahannam, right? And anybody who has this disease, right? The Prophet wasallam is told that even if you make istighfar for them, their istighfar is not going to be accepted, right? So we are dealing with something much more severe than COVID, much more severe than any disease out there, right? And so that, that's why every Muslim should be worried about that. And the believers are the ones who are the most worried about this. Right? And so that was all review. Let's get to the qualities, inshallah. Subhan, you can share the ayat. Um, just uh, just the Tanzil uh, page, inshallah. When the hypocrites come to you, Ya Rasulullah, Jaaka shows that they come from a long distance, right? They make the effort. Ja is an effort is involved in it, okay? They make the effort of coming from far because they don't want to be with Rasulullah, but they make an effort to come close to Rasulullah just so that they can be recognized. These are the qualities of hypocrites. They want to be with righteous people, innocent people, you know, people of authority, so they can have some of that, right? So these hypocrites, they come to you. They will keep coming to you, not just in the past. They will keep coming to you your entire life, even in the, in the future. They testify that indeed you are the messenger of Allah. Allah says, Allahu ya'lamu inna ka Allah knows that he's a messenger of Allah, but Allah testifies that you are liars. Hypocrites are liars. The first quality of a hypocrite we see here is lying. And they, what they said is correct. 
that he is a messenger of Allah, but what is wrong is their testification. They are not sincere in what they're saying. What they said is correct, but the heart is not. Allah, Allah says, you are lying about your heart. In, uh, in the munafiqina, like kathibun. So these are people who are looking for position of leadership and they want recognition. The, the next quality Allah mentions is that they take uh, uh, they take uh, imanahum. They use the iman as a shield. Okay, they use the iman as a shield. They bring excuses, right? They say they're believers, but in reality, they are some somebody else, right? They bring lame excuses to get off the hook, right? How we have in 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 the sirah, uh, many companions, uh, many hypocrites bringing excuses. Oh, I can't go because this thing came up, that thing came up. Oh, you know, there's beautiful women on the way, so I can't, you know, take this journey. So these are people who bring excuses to not strive in the way of Allah, to not, you know, give their wealth and their children in the way of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they turn away from the, from the path of Allah. How horrible is what they have been doing. That is because they had iman, then they disbelieved. The reason why these hypocrites have these qualities is because they kept, they were on the borderline. They were borderline Muslims. They were weak Muslims. They were, you know, uh, and we talked about two different types of Muslims. One Muslim that's, that's aiming for the highest, for the best. Uh, what is the best thing I could do, right? Like the Sahabas. And there are other types of Muslims are asking, what is the bare minimum I could do, right? To remain in the fold of Islam. And that's what Allah says. That is because they had Iman and Kafiru. And they went into hypocrisy. They kept moving like that. And eventually what happened? And I said that if you are a weak Muslim, or if we are weak Muslims for too long, then we will become hypocrites, right? We will become hypocrites. So that's what happened. They kept, they, they remained in the weak, you know, in, in, in the spectrum of, you know, Islam, uh, Iman and Kufr, they remained very close to Kufr. And they kept moving like that. Eventually what happened? Their hearts were sealed. Their hearts were sealed. And they don't understand. And Taba'a, we talked about Taba'a, is when something is filled up and is sealed up. Right? So they can't get any advice anymore. Their hearts are to the fill and no warning helps them, benefits them. Their hearts are sealed. They don't understand the reality of things. They think, they think that the Muslims are working for money. They think that everything about Islam is for the worldly benefit. They have no understanding. They prefer the temporary over the permanent. They don't understand. Other qualities Allah mentions of these hypocrites. When you look at their bodies, you'll be amazed at them. Right? So you'll be, when you see them, you'll be amazed by their bodies. Meaning that the hearts are dead. The heart is no more there. It's sealed up. What is remained is just, uh, you know, the uh, the outer shell, right? And so it's just the bodies. They will beautify themselves, right? They will sell themselves off. We talked about six meanings of nifaq. You can look at the recordings, inshallah. And one of the meanings is when you sell a product more than what it is, right? More than what the actual value of that is. So these people, they beautify themselves. They present themselves even though they're not worth that much. They're people of material. For them, it's about brand. It's about you know outer things, the you know the uh, the money, the dignity, the kind of house you live in, the the neighborhood you live in, the kind of you know things you have. This is what uh, you know they value. So when you look at them, you will be amazed by their uh, by their outer appearance. And whenever they speak, you keep want to listen to them, right? Again, trying to sell them very eloquent in in speech. And Allah compares them to a dry piece of wood. Why? Because a wood is part of a tree. A tree is compared to a believer in the Quran, right? Quran, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu says, the believers are like the tree. Tree is full of life. Tree benefits. Tree has roots. You know, it gives you sh shade and all kinds of things. It brings benefit like a believer brings benefit. But a wood that is just dried piece of wood standing upright, Standing, standing upright to show that first of all hypocrites bring no benefit right to any community right they are just there to they just take up space and bring no benefit right and them standing shows that they want to be recognized they are they have no purpose but are standing up to show like i'm worth something 
And as soon as some kind of wind comes or some calamity comes, they just fall off. Basically, you can't rely on them. You can give them important tasks uh, and they will definitely, you know, trip you and, and fail you. And Allah says, continuing with their, with their qualities, that every time a loud cry is made, they think it's for them, right? They're always paranoid, right? Oh, someone says, oh, thief, they, they immediately get scared. They think every advice is towards them and they get offended with the advices, right? Allah says, those are the real enemies. Those are the ones who should watch out for because they're weakening the Muslims from within, right? Not only are they stopping themselves from going ahead in Islam, but they are also making others stop, right? They're preventing others from going forward. Allah says, those are the real, those are the real enemies. Um, beware of them, be cautious of them. May Allah's curse be on them, right? May they be killed. May, they, may Allah destroy them. How are they turned away? Right? How? What, what an ugly eye! How they? How come they are so deluded? Another quality of these disbelievers, Allah says, whenever it is said to them, come, the Messenger of Allah will seek forgiveness for for you. Right? The Messenger of Allah is going to seek forgiveness. So come and seek Allah, Prophet Sallallahu forgiveness. And it's in the specific context when Abdullah bin Ubay was called, "Hey, come, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know." wants to see you, you know, go seek forgiveness for him because you made mistakes, obvious mistakes, right? Um, he left with 300 men in the, in the Battle of Uhud. You know, he, he, did, he made a big mess in Ahzab. He made a big mess in, ben, in, in this expedition and in, with the slander of Aisha radiallahu anha. So it is said, go and seek forgiveness uh, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He says, I, you told me to leave my leadership, I left. You told me to pray, I prayed. You told me to give zakah, I gave zakah for my wealth. Now you want me to do sujood to him? I'm not going to go do that, right? This is the attitude of the hypocrites, right? This, this is their attitude. So Allah, Allah says, whenever it is said to them, come, seek the forgiveness, right? Uh, go and see, come to Rasulullah Sallallahu He will seek forgiveness for you. What do they do? Right? They turn their faces. And in our context, it could be that when you're called to do the work of deen, some charity work is there, some khair work is there waiting for you. Come. And this will again, you know, get you forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What happens? I have other things to do. You know, they just turn their faces. They say, no, I got other things to do, other obligations to do, right? Uh, you will see them, you know, preventing themselves and others while they are arrogant, not submitting to the mistakes, uh, to their mistakes. Okay. And Allah says, it is, it makes no difference. It makes no difference whether you seek forgiveness for them, Ya Rasulullah, or you don't seek forgiveness for them. Allah is not going to forgive them, right? This is the most scariest part uh, of, the, of the entire surah, right? That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whom Allah Subh'anaHu Wa turned the Qibla just because the Prophet looked to the sky, Allah turned the Qibla, not even him saying Allah accepted his dua, right? His request here, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is begging Allah to forgive these people, right? Allah says, I'm not going to forgive. Even if you ask me 70 times, I'm not going to forgive these people. Allah did not even say this about the disbelievers. And these are people, so-called Muslims, having these qualities, right? Qualities of what? When they, when they get angry, they swear. When they are trusted with something, they break the trust. When they speak, they lie, right? When they are, uh, you know, when they are given an amana, they break that. Right? These are these these are the hypocrites that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about that Allah is not going to forgive them. Now I guess inshallah with that we'll start today's session. Oh that's a good review, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Humu alladhina yaqulun la tunfiqu ala min inda rasulillahi hatta yanfaddu. And these are the statements of Zayd bin al-Arqam. Right? He comes and he says to Rasulullah sallallahu Ya Rasulullah, Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul said this and this and this. And Allah is affirming, yes, he was correct. They are the ones who said, La tunfiqu ala min inda Rasulillah. Don't spend on those who are near Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hatta yanfaddu. Infadda, we said, is when, when, when a ship, you know, when, when, a, when a ship comes out of, of a wood, right? When you have the, when you break a seal, 
that's in fadu when a glass breaks shatters that's in fadu right so hippoc the abdullah ibn, ibn salul says to the people don't spend on on these people they're going to uh, if you don't spend on them they're going to disperse they're going to shatter like the glass and islam will not go forward and this is a mentality of the hypocrites they think that islamic organizations or the cause of islam moves forward only because of their charity right people have this oh these you know these imams these mullahs these, these you know they're only functioning because of our charity because of the you know some uh, thing the charity that we throw on them right the the change that we throw on them is because of that this is their mentality so he's saying to them don't give these people will disperse and what we said also is that if this mentality comes within the workers of deen that oh my god if there are no finances if there's no money then this work of deen will come to an end this thing will shut down if you have the mentality allah says that will be the destruction of that cause of that group right you should never rely on material you should never rely on on money or resources it is always in history is witness to this that when islam had the least resources the work of islam you know the islam spread the most right islam spread the most in times when we had the least resources in the in the first 200 centuries right and so allah is saying that this is what they are saying this is the mentality of the hypocrites we should not we should not be concerned with money rather we should be concerned with service with the work and allah will take this work forward then allah says in the next ayah walillahi khaza'inu samawat so you same ayah end of the ayah walillahi khaza'inu samawati wal ard walakin al munafiqin la yafqahun but to allah belongs the khaza'in the treasures of the heavens and the earth but the hypocrites do not understand Allah is saying the money that you give hypocrites that's also from Allah. Khazain, what are the khazain? What are the treasures of Allah? The rain is a treasure of Allah. If there's no rain, I know no life is possible. That is the treasure of Allah. The rays of the sun, the flowing winds, the fruits that blossom, the flowers that blossom, all of that belongs to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walillahi khazainu samawati wal ard. but the hypocrites have no understanding they don't they don't they have no fiqh they have no understanding of it they think money is everything and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you look at this in the quran every time allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about money or worldly possessions or land or anything like that he calls it ukhra right for those of you who attended surah al fath we talked about this wa ukhra lam taqdiru alayha and the other thing the side thing you know addition to that that you did not get right Well, you know, ukhra he says. Well, ukhra to hibuna ha. And the other thing that you love, for because for Allah, money has no value, right? This worldly material has no value. He says ukhra, but the hypocrite he can think beyond that. For him, you know, money is everything. For him, material is everything. ذلك ما بلغهم من العلم. That is the extent of their knowledge. They can think beyond that. Then Allah says in the next ayah, يقولون. He's quoting the hypocrites. يقولون لا رجعنا إلى المدينة لا يخرجنا الأعز منها الأذل. They say that when we return to Medina, when we go back to Medina, we are going to make sure that the dignified one, أعز, is going to expel the humiliated ones. ولله ولله العزة ولرسوله وللمؤمنين. To Allah belongs the respect. All right the the respect belongs to Allah and to his messenger and to the believers walakin al munafiqina la ya'lamun but the hypocrites do not they don't they do not know right and so now let's look at this ayah a little bit deeper Allah says yaqulun they say you see that is plural yaqulun they say even though it's only one person who said it ibn ubay said it right that when we go back we're going to expel the 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 dignified ones are going to expel the humiliated ones but by using the plural allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you and me that even though one person said it but everybody else was listening and did not contradict that person they are all included in it right a person can say oh i didn't say that he said it what were you doing oh silence is a sign of acceptance you remember that if you are silent with something that means you accept it right even though this is used in marriage but that's a rule general rule right so that's what allah says yaqulun they all are part of it 
right? They're all part of it. That's where you should, when you see something wrong, you should stop it. This is a quality of a believer, right? When you see something wrong, stand up and say it. You are wrong. And don't be part of it. Don't say that I don't want to get involved in it. I don't want to say yes to it or no to it. I don't want to get in trouble. Just stay away from it. You know who, do, who does that? Like, let me just take a middle path. If I get involved, I'll get in trouble. I might lose friendship on this side. If I don't get involved, you know, uh, if, I, if I do say it, then, you know, I might lose that, lose that on this side. Let me just, you know, stay neutral. You know who does this? Hypocrite. Munafiq does this. Exactly. Right. This is a quality of hypocrite. Remember we said that Munafiq ha is someone, is used for a lizard hole where with two, right? Remember with two endings, right? Two openings. Because if trouble comes from one side, he leaves from the other side. Right? If a snake or something or scorpion coming through one hole, he's going to leave from the other hole. So he makes friends on both sides so that he's not hurt. So Allah says, Allah says in the Quran, وَفِيكُمْ سَمَّعُونَ لَهُمْ right? This is a, describing the hypocrites. He says there are many among the hypocrites who listen to things. They just listen. They're part of it. They don't even say anything, but they listen to it. They are part of uh, being hypocrites. So Allah says, أَعَزُّ مِنْهَا الْأَذَلِ The dignified ones are going to expel the humiliated ones. These two qualities, a'az and adhal, are qualities of believers in the Quran. Allah says in Surah Al-Fatih again, for those of you who attended, they are humble. Okay? Adhillatin ala al-mu'mineen, a'izzatin ala al-kafirin. Right? In Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah also says, they are humble, soft towards the believers, and they are stern and strict against the disbelievers. Right? This is actually the quality of believer that you need to have both. And az. So what is a hypocrite thinking? For the hypocrite, izza, dignity, respect, right, is based on not iman, believer, disbeliever. He doesn't make a distinction between that. It's based on money, status, power, authority, or the kind of degree you have, whatever it is. It's based on material. So they are the aiz, they are the dignified ones. Why? Because they are the ones who gave shelter. Because they have a higher status, they think they are the, um, the ones who have dignity and respect. Allah says, Walillahi, Walillahi al-izzatu. Okay? And, and for the Arabic students, it should be al-izzatu lillahi. Mubtada should come first, and the khabar, and mutalib al khabar comes at the end. But Allah brings lillahi forward. Lillahi al-izzatu. Right? To Allah alone belongs the dignity and respect. Okay? And then he mentions Rasul and Mu'mineen later on to show that the real one, the source of Izza, the source of respect, I want you guys to listen to this, it's really important. Especially people who are working for, for the cause of Islam, for the cause of deen. Respect and dignity and honor, all of that comes from who? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because he's all powerful. In extension, it's to the Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In extension, it is to the believers. Okay? So the scholars say that the Izza, the respect of Allah, the Izza of Allah is the power of Allah. The Izza of Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is his intercession. Okay? His intercession is the Izza, is, a, is an honor given to Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because of Shafa'ah, he will be able to intercede for us on the Day of Judgment. And the Izza for the believer is their humility towards Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa This is a izza. When a believer is adilla, he is humble towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He does not raise his voice. When he's humble and soft with the believers, this is a izza for the believers. This is izza. Even though you might think it's adil, but it's actually izza. Allah says in the Quran, Man kana yuridul izza, falillahi al-izza tu jami'a. Whoever wants izza, honor and respect, Authority, power, who wants izza, know that to Allah belongs all the izza. That means Allah is telling you and me, guys, that we should not be looking for respect from the people. You and me should not be looking for respect and honor and dignity from the people. You know why? Because the work of deen is paved with humiliation. The work of deen is paved with humiliation. And history is witness to that. Every prophet was humiliated. Every prophet was cursed. Every prophet was disrespected. Every prophet was heard, belied. All kinds of things happened to the prophets. Would you say that they are 
there's no izza. No, Allah to Allah belongs. But when you're in the work of deen, when you're doing the cause, the good cause, you will get a lot of hate, a lot of disrespect, right? And they will not be done by the outsiders. They will be done by the family members. The disrespect will be done by the family members. You could say like, how come everybody's respecting me? And you, look at you, look, look at the way you talk to me. And nobody says this to me. And this will come from your family members by the Muslims, right? Not from a non-Muslim, right? Allah says in the Quran, تُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرُ Allah elevates, honors whom he wills and humiliates whom he wills. Whatever your, whatever your status is, whatever thing you're going through, whether you're honored, Allah gives you victory, you're honored. Allah gives you, you know, humiliation, you know, you're debased, whatever it is. You say, I am, I'm happy with it. بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرِ يَا Allah. You know the best. I'm happy with it. You should never, and this is a mentality of some of the people, right? Some of the uh, weak Muslims. They think that the one to work for the deen, the ones who work for the cause of deen should have the perfect family, should have respect, should have the ideal family that we should all look up to. And that is not a reality. That is not the reality. If you look at the family of Nuh a.s., would you say that that's like a, 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 you know, a beautiful family, perfect family, right? Son is doing something else. You know, so wife is doing something else. Is that a perfect family? Look at that. Yaqub a.s. Okay, Yaqub alayhi salam's parenting. People could say, Yaqub alayhi salam, what kind of a father he is? Look at your sons, Yaqub. Na'udhu billah min dalik. Right? People, people could say that. But look at Yaqub alayhi salam. He is the best example of parenting in the Quran. Especially a father, you know, a parenting uh, of, uh, or a fatherhood, right? Best example. You can say, look, you know, his sons are like that. That is not, that, that is not the right understanding that people of deen should have the perfect family. The people who work for them will have the di most difficult family life, for sure, right? Lut alayhi salam's wife, right? Like him being the prophet, and if you give advice on, on how to be a good husband, people can say, look at your wife, and you're talking about husband and wife relationship. You can't say that. Izzah belongs to Allah. Honor belongs to Allah. Tu'izzah min tasha, wa tuzillah min tasha. Ibrahim alayhi salam, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam and his father, right? Being a prophet, you can't say, Ibrahim, you're going to talk about, you know, about khair and goodness and being a good son. How about you? You left, you, you were kicked out of your house and you don't have, no. Is what, this is all up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gives honor and humiliation. Allah, Allah knows what, what the right thing is. So people should stop thinking that people of, people of deen should have the best, you know, and I should be the, they should be the ideal you know, example for everyone. So Allah says, and this is the mentality of the, uh, of the hypocrites, right? The, the people of uh, honor are going to um, expel the ones who are humiliated, right? And so another lesson we, we get from this ayah is that we should stop getting obsessed with what will the people say? This mentality of lo kya kehenge, right? What will the people say? Izza. I, my, what will the people say? Where is the Izza? Izza belongs to Allah. Allah gives Izza. Right? Allah gives Izza. What is the right is the right. You should follow that. Okay? That brings us to the end of this passage. It's the conclusion of this passage. Um, a few more points, inshallah, before we get to the last section of the surah. Really beautiful part, uh, section of the surah. Um, I want to say a few things. So, in the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, end of this passage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about munafiqun. He mentions munafiqun twice. Right? He mentions munafiqun twice, and right in the beginning of the surah, he also mentioned them twice. You know, this, this section is actually mirrored, right? We won't, we won't go into the depth of it, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mirrors the entire section. Now, in one ayah, he says, The hypocrites don't have any understanding. In the second ayah, he, he says, The hypocrites do not know. What is the difference? In the first ayah, where they say that do not spend on them, do not spend on the believers, it's about money. It's about money. Because they think that the work of Islam continues because of money. So Allah says, لا يفقهون. They don't understand. It is not my money. Dumbo, whatever you want to say. right? It is not my money that this work of deen continues. لا يفقهون. They don't understand. You have no fiqh. And in the second ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about dignity. Right? Honor, respect. 
and they think dignity comes from this and that, from society, from money and all that. Allah says, no, dignity does not come from that. لا يعلمون. It comes from Allah. Munafiqun do not know. لا يعلمون. Okay, so that's the difference between يفقهون and يعلمون. And another thing I want to mention is that usually in the Quran, we see the disbelievers disrespecting the believers. Right? We see وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِهِمْ يَتَغَامَزُونَ سُرَ الْمُطَّفِفِينَ When they pass by the believers, they wink at the believers. عَبَسَ وَبَصَرْ Right? The disbelievers, they frowned and they looked and they turned. Right? ثم أَدْبَرَ وَاسْتَكْبَرَ And became, you know, arrogant. Right? Looking at the believers. Or Allah says in the Quran, وَإِنْ يَكَادُوا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَيُزْلِقُونَكَ بِأَبَصَارِهِمْ When the disbelievers look at you, they look at, look at you in a way so that you should slip and something should, should, should happen to you. Usually, it's the disbelievers disrespecting the believers. But in these ayat, what are we learning? That this attitude is coming within the Muslim community. Okay? This can come within the Muslim community. And that does not mean you get the license to call them hypocrites. And that's an important thing I want to highlight again and again, that someone could have the qualities of hypocrite, but they're not actually hypocrite. They're not actually munafiqeen, right? And a lot of times we interpret people's, uh, people's reactions, right? Oh, that person, you know, he broke, uh, that person, he was supposed to come today. He promised me, but he didn't come. So that's a quality of a hypocrite. He must be a hypocrite. We can't jump to a conclusion like that. Maybe he slept. Maybe something happened. Maybe, you know, uh, some accident he happened. Someone passed away. Something could have happened. Before we jump to conclusion, always. Uh, or, or the best thing is when people ask for, you know, donations, raising things for a cause and all that. Oh, they're doing it for dunya. They're doing it to make their dunya. These are all assumptions that we should never make about people. And this is a quality of a, of a hypocrite as well when you assume things without knowledge. And so with that, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directs our attention to the believers, right? So all this time, Allah is talking about the qualities of the hypocrites, the mentality of the hypocrites, right? What is the cause? What will, what will lead to? What, what hypocrisy leads to and all that? Now, in the final, final passage of this surah, the final three ayat, Allah talks about what is a cure. What is a cure to this? And now Allah directs his attention to the believers, right? And you see in the Quran, there are three audiences. When the Quran is being read, there are three audiences. The Prophet ﷺ, the believers, and the hypocrites, right? Prophet ﷺ, the believers, and the hypocrites slash disbelievers, right? They're on the same category, the three audiences. The whole surah, the Prophet, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to the Prophet وسلم, about the hypocrites. When hypocrites come to you, when it is said to them, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to the Prophet وسلم, about the hypocrites. In this section, from this point till the end, Allah is going to talk to the, Prophet, uh, to the believers directly. He's going to address the believers directly and he says, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu. Oh, you who believe, oh, you the ones who are not like the hypocrites, oh, you who don't have these qualities, or maybe you do, let me tell you what is the cause and what is a, what is a remedy to your problems. Allah says, La tulhikum amwalukum wala awladukum an dhikrillah wa man yafal dhalika fa ulaikum al khasirun. Do not let your money and your children distract you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكْ Whoever does that, فَأُولَيْكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ Those are the real losers. هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ Those are the real losers. Let's go into this ayah, inshallah, bit by bit and understand. First off, أَلْهَا لَا تُلْهِكُمْ تُلْهِكُمْ أَلْهَا إِلْهَاءً أَلْهَا يُلْهِ إِلْهَاءً What does this word mean? It is used for a distraction that has no benefit. Okay, it is used for a occupation that does not bring uh, any benefit. Another, another is when you, when your attention is preoccupied with something at the expense of something more important. Okay, so for example, you have an important project that's due tomorrow, but you get distracted with some some side thing. Okay, some other assignment which not which is not worth that much, or you got just to go out and play something. So you're distracted with something that's way more important. Okay, that's alha. Allah says in the Quran, alha kumutakathur. Right, this one to this, this this one for more has distracted you. And the Prophet Sallam he describes this beautifully in a hadith. He says that what is little and enough 
is better. What is little and enough is better than what is lot and distracts. Okay? Is what alha is, right? La tulhikum. La tulhikum. Don't let what money and children distract you. You know? So uh, to give a few more examples, you know, you might be playing for, for a few minutes. Playing for a few minutes is fine, but getting obsessed by it, right? Getting obsessed by it. You play for you play for like three hours, you know, like a few hours, a few minutes is fine, but you play for three hours, you continue, then you watch YouTube videos, you do this, you do that, you get obsessed by it. You watch one episode, then you watch another one, another one, another one, you get obsessed by it. This is alha, right? This comes from lahu, right? Entertainment, right? And la'ib, right? So uh, lahu and la'ib, right? That's what it is. So uh, you uh, want to look presentable, you do some makeup, but you get obsessed by it. Then you go on and on shopping, shopping, and you know, and and waste a lot of money and time, right? Or food, you love food, it's important, but you get obsessed by it, right? But you want to find all the recipes, then you want to travel like distances just to eat that food, this food, right? Or you get obsessed by children. This is what alha is. Understand? La tulhikum. Do not let what distract you, wealth and children. Allah is highlighting two things. Do not let money and children distract you. Okay? How is money, how does money distract a person? Okay? Number one, when you have money, you afford entertainment. Right? When you have the money, then you have the free time to do all kinds of entertainment. Then you are distracted. It is money that is giving you the time and the, uh, the finances to buy those entertainment. La tulhikum. Right? So some people are distracted uh, by money, by, by checking their accounts. They keep checking their accounts. Every few minutes they're checking what's the balance, what's the balance, what's the balance. Or they plan on uh, getting a check soon and they say, okay, once I get this, I'm going to do that, do that, that, that. That's distraction. Occupied, preoccupied all the time, right? Or you want to save up or something and you keep checking how much savings do I have? Do I have, you know, enough savings, enough savings, you know, to get there, right? That's, that's money. And Children, Allah says, do not let money distract you and do not let children distract you. Children, children can be a distraction, right? If your child becomes a showpiece for the society, if your child becomes a trophy for the society, that is a distraction. That you, you know, you bring up this ch child so that they, the people can look at this child and say, oh my God, what an amazing parenting, right? Oh my God, you know, look at this person. Right, so they can appreciate their parents. So they want to, you know, get this degree and that degree, all that, even though the iman is gone, just so that people can say, you know, my son is this, my daughter is this. I want my son to lead the salah. I want my son to, uh, you know, memorize the Quran and give that speech or give that lecture to present that, you know, my child is something great. Allah says, do not let your money and your children, right? distract you from what from the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we'll get to the remembrance of allah in a second and you know also bringing excuses for not praying bringing children excuses for not praying or not attending classes oh my child is now going to high school or he's going to grade two has a lot of work to do i need to take care of him he can't be coming to islamic classes or i can't come to islamic classes or quran classes because my kid is doing this do not let what your children and your money distract you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? It's interesting here. Allah says, Allah does not say, don't, don't get distracted by money and children. Allah is not saying that. Don't let children and money distract you as though money and children have a life on their own and they are distracting you, right? As though they are like two people trying to distract you. How is that possible? What does that mean? You know, Allah subhanahu wa is giving us the reason that money and children on their own are not distraction. You need to, you need, finance is a big part of your life. Children are a big part of your life. You have to take care of them. You have to be with them. A lot of your time is spent with them. That's, that's, that's fine. But the moment you leave your dhikr, the moment you compromise on your salah, you're doing something that is causing the distraction. You are doing something that's making them distract you. What you're doing is not doing enough dhikr. An dhikrillah. You are turning away from the remembrance of Allah 
That's why the money and children are getting into you. Your heart is not occupied with the remembrance of Allah. They need, needs, uh, it's preoccupied with the remembrance of money and children. Okay? Because there's no Allah, therefore, as a result of a void in your heart, they have come. You see that? So Allah is making amwal and awlad both rafa here. Amwalu, awladu, both of them let you distract, let distract you. Allah says this a lot in the Quran. Al-mal wal banun, zinatul hayat dunya Mal and children, constantly Allah mentions time and time again. Wealth and children, wealth and children. You know, usually men are more obsessed with the wealth and women are more obsessed with the children. Right? These are the two distractions for two different genders, but it applies for both genders, obviously. Amwal and awlad. Because of awlad, how many of us get into haram transactions? Oh, my child, when he grows up, I want him to become this and this and this. I need to have, I need to, you know, do this for now. I have no other choice but to enter this haram transaction. Right, I, I have to compromise on my uh, on my halal business because I need more money. I'm going to do haram business so that my children can have this life. How many of us do that? How many times you end up doing that? This is a remedy Allah is saying. Allah says, "Ya amanu." If you want to get rid of hypocrisy, do not let do not be obsessed with money. Do not be obsessed with your children. Uh, an obsession is when you compromise on your dikrilla. There's something more important. You compromise on that and you do something that's less important. Okay? Allah says in Surah Tawbah, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ قَتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشُونَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّصُوا In this ayah, you can, you can, you can um, you know, summarize the entire categories, all the categories into two right? Wealth and children, wealth and children. So Allah says, if your fathers, if your brothers or your sons, your brothers, your spouses, your family, right? That's all family part, right? The family and children uh, section. And then your wealth uh, that you have gathered, you have saved up for so long, and your business that you fear that it might go in loss or you might lose out, or the houses that you decorated, you spent so much money on, you know, time and everything. If all of these things is more beloved to you than Allah and His Messenger and jihad in fi sabili, working and striving for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then be ready. Fatarabbasu, be prepared. Get ready for a punishment. Get ready for the adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the scariest ayah in the Quran, right? What is Allah telling us here? That the moment, the whole point of life, the whole point of everything, Allah giving you everything is dhikrillah, is the remembrance of Allah. And when we turn away from that, then those are the real losers, Allah says. Real losers. And we'll talk about the end of the surah uh, and, and, and the ayah in, in a bit, inshallah. Dhikrillah. What, is mean, what do I mean by dhikrillah? What is the meaning of dhikrillah? Number one, dhikrillah is Quran. Dhikrillah is Quran. Let not the money and children distract you from Quran, your recitation of the Quran, your memorization of the Quran, your understanding of the Quran. Do not let it distract you. And for the Sahabas, Quran and Salah is the same thing. Okay? So the second thing, Dhikrillah, is Salah. Quran and Salah, you can put that in one category. Why is Salah? Because Salah has the Quran. So Dhikrillah is referring to Salah in essence, right? Because it includes the Quran. So do not let money and children distract you from Quran and from Salah, right? And now a lot of Muslims don't understand the Quran. They don't understand the Quran. This is a tragedy. That is why there's hypocrisy within us. That's why the Ummah is not moving forward because there is their enemies within us. The, the enemy is within us, okay? And that's we don't understand the Quran. If Quran is a dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if we block the Ummah from remembering Allah, what is the Ummah? Where is the Ummah? What Ummah is left? Is there any Ummah? Is there, are there any hearts that are alive? Is there any heart that is not that is not Taba Allahu ala qulubihim? Right? The moment you understand the Quran, the Quran will give you the reality of life, will tell you the, who the hypocrites are, who the believers are, what is the day of judgment. It will revive your hearts. It will keep you struggling on the right path. So the first thing that you and me need to do is the Quran, dhikrillah, is understanding of the Quran. And if you don't understand the Quran while you're praying, then have your study of the Quran side by side, 
right? Do your study of the Quran, study of the Arabic language, whatever it is. And at the same time, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through your salah. The second thing that's included in dhikrillah is the prophetic du'as. Okay? It's the prophetic du'as. By the way, on the, on the, first, on the first point, Quran, right? Access to the Quran, the whole point of this, these halaqats, once a month halaqat and all the different programs that we offer and alhamdulillah a lot of other organizations are offering the whole point of this the whole you know the essence of this is dhikrillah is to remember Allah is to connect our hearts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right so Allah subhanahu wa says that the first thing is dhikrillah Quran and sunnah uh, and, and the Prophet sallallahu uh, alayhi wa thing the, the salam the second thing is prophetic du'as okay prophetic du'as that when you Allah says in the Quran that الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَىٰ جَنُوبِهِمْ These are those people who remember Allah sitting, standing, lying down. This is a quality of the, of the, of the believers. They're constantly remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the prophetic du'as, du'as when sleeping, du'a when waking up, right? Alhamdulillah, الَّذِي أَحْيَانًا Du'a when entering the washroom, du'a when leaving the washroom, right? Du'a when eating, du'a when wearing your clothes, du'a when walking to the masjid, when coming back from the masjid, going to the marketplaces, visiting the sick, entering the home, leaving the home. This should be a constant thing for us, right? This is a way to keep our hearts alive. This is a cure for hypocrisy. Dhikrillah. Do not let these things distract you from dhikrillah. And if you don't know the du'as, the best thing to do is have like sticky notes on different places, on outside your washroom, you know, outside your house, different places. Just put these notes so that, uh, you know, you can uh, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night, right? Dhikrillah, right? Alhamdulillah, I'm going to ask subhanahu wa ta'ala to share the Athkar book. Um, and that's the whole pur purpose for the al manara students. We read Athkar morning and evening. This is Dhikrillah. This is all it is. The whole school, the purpose of school is Dhikrillah. Right, all your classes, your life is dhikrillah. Do not let your other things distract you from the real purpose. Right, so inshallah, we're going to send the athkar book for all of you so you can practice your athkar morning and evening. Right, and different musnoon du'as, inshallah, that you can practice. And the third thing in dhikrillah is good companionship, and this is passive dhikr, not active dhikr, but even then, it is a dhikr. And this is being in the company of righteous people. And where will you find this? Where will you find this? Masajids. Right, people in, in good circles, right? Because masajids combine everything. They combine the Quran, they combine uh, the salah, and they combine the good companionship. So Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, O you who believe, O you who are not hypocrites, do not let money and children distract you from your real purpose, uh, dhikrillah. If you do that, ذلك, if you do that, and interesting here, Allah said, money and children are distracting you. And then he says, if you do it, if you let it distract, what does that mean? I'll give you an example. If I tell, if I tell someone, if, I, if you tell the children, you guys, don't let them hurt you. If, if, that, if you do that, what did I say? Right? You see the changes in, 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 the, in the pronoun? Don't let money, uh, sorry, don't let them hurt you. If you do that in switching, What's happening here is like what I just mentioned a few minutes back that money and children are the ones that are distracting you. So you're questioning, what is my fault in that? I'm not doing anything. It's, it's money and children that are distracting me. So you should tell money and children. Allah saying, no, you are not doing something that's letting this distraction happen. And that is you're ignoring dhikr. Okay? You're ignoring dhikr. That's why they're letting, uh, that, that's why they're letting you distract. For example, if you're at work, okay? If you're at work, you try to skip dhuhr. Skip the whole salah. That's dhikrillah. That, that is distraction. Tulhikum amwalikum awladikum and dhikrillah. That's distracting you from the from the members of Allah. Or you make the dhuhr really short. Or you skip your sunnas. Right? Or instead of praying four sunnas, you pray two sunnas. Right? Or uh, while you are in salah, you're thinking about dunya. What about after I finish this? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. If that is happening, that work is distracting you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Or you delay the salah till the end of the time. Because you have something important to do, some important project to do, you delay it till the end. Or you skip the askar after salah. After you say salam alaikum wa you just leave right away because you have something else to do. Right? So don't miss your askar for the students here. Don't miss your askar even if you're not coming to school. On the weekends when you're off, do not miss your askar. Get up in the morning, do your askar and, and asr as well. Alhamdulillah, fajr, uh, the morning askar you guys do in school, 
but the evening athkar do not miss on that. لا تلهكم Do not let this happen. Don't let money and children distract you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says in the Quran, وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Remember Allah a lot so that you may be successful. In this ayah, Allah is saying they are the real losers, the one who let them distract from the dhikrillah. But the successful ones are the ones who remember Allah. You know which surah is this? وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ وَإِذَا رَأَوْا تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوًا إِنْ تَضُّوا Anyone know this surah? Come on, Hafaz. Which surah is this? وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ وَإِذَا رَأَوْا تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوًا إِنْ تَضُّوا إِلَيْهَا Jumu'ah. Very good, mashallah. Surah Al-Jumu'ah. Okay, very good. This is really Surah Al-Jumu'ah. This is Surah Al-Jumu'ah. And remember what Allah, the, what the Prophet says about Surah Al-Jumu'ah. So the Jumu'ah Munafiqoon, right? He used to read this together, right? He used to read this together in Eid, uh, Eid prayer especially. And what Allah is telling us here is that Jumu'ah is an institution to protect the Ummah from hypocrisy. Jumu'ah is an institution Allah has built to protect us from what? Hypocrisy because this is the remembrance of Allah. Wazkurullah referring to Surah Al-Jumu'ah. It's actual Jumu'ah Salah, right? This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, beautiful, right? And the Prophet ﷺ tells us that people who maintain uniqueness to Allah have won the race, right? al muwahidun the ones who maintain uniqueness, the one makers, the one, the single ones, they have won the race. And the Prophet ﷺ was asked, who are these? Man ya Rasulullah, who are these people ya Rasulullah? And the Prophet ﷺ says, وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ There are those who remember Allah a lot, men who remember Allah a lot, and the women who remember Allah a lot. This is it, simple, right? Men and women, Allah mentions them separately. Why? Because just because the men go for Jumu'ah does not mean the women get to sit at home and, you know, watch episodes or just chill, right? Just because the men go for Jumu'ah does not mean the women is, should be, you know, behind. They should also try and go and remember Allah. Or... The other way around, oh, my wife does all the, you know, she attends classes, she does dua, everything. I don't need to do, I have work to do. You know, she takes care of everything, I don't know. Everyone, men needs to remember Allah, dhakirin and dhakirat. Both have to do their remembrance of Allah. You can't say, oh, I'm the breadwinner, I take care of money, she takes care of children. That can happen. With remembrance, you're both equal. You need to do your dhikr, he, he, needs, to do, uh, he needs to do his dhikr, she needs to do her dhikr. This is it. Right? With that, you know, Allah. This is the one, these are the ones who are going to be successful. And the Prophet says in another hadith, should I tell you of the best possible thing you can do, the purest of them considered by your king, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the purest of deeds that is considered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the highest of them in your ranks. And should I tell you of something that is better than spending gold and all kinds of coins and better than meeting your enemies in the battlefields? And the Sahabas are, this is the best thing ever. What can be better than this? Tell us, Ya Rasulullah, bala. And the Prophet said, Uzkurullah ta'ala. Right? Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is it. Right? This is a remedy to hypocrisy. Ya ayyuhaladheen amanu, la tulhikum amwalukum wa awladukum an dhikrillah. And the, Allah says, the cause of hypocrisy is distraction. Tulhikum. And you know what the problem is today, guys, especially with online learning? Distraction. This message here, that message here, you can't focus on one thing, right? You can't focus on one thing. A thousand things come up when you're working on one thing. This is distraction. We just distracted human beings now, right? And we need to come back and stay focused and cure. The cure is dhikr. Stay focused on your dhikr, extend your salahs, extend your Quran, remain steadfast. For ulaika Allah says, Whoever lets them get distracted from the members of Allah, they are the real losers. Whom is showing, Allah could have said, they are the losers. To show that compared to anything else, this is the greatest loss, right? You might have lost your child. Maybe your child, you know, was in the, in the mother's womb and you, she just, you know, the, the, the baby just died. Right? Or after born, the, the child died. You might have lost some of your business because of COVID. You might have lost some of your wealth. You might have lost your beloved ones. You might have lost your house, 
right? You might have lost your toy. You might have lost your degree that you wanted to get. You might have lost your respect, trust, whatever it is. You might have lost, but compared to the dhikr Allah, these loss means nothing. There's nothing greater than losing this. The ones who lose dhikr Allah, they are the biggest losers. They are the real losers. You wake up late in the morning and you miss your two hours of work. You miss your pay of two hours. That is the real loss is not losing that pay. The real loss is you missed Fajr. The real loss is you missed Fajr. The, you know, today everything is closed. You can't meet your friends. That's a loss. You know what the real loss is, guys? Masajids are closed. You can go to the masjid. Alhamdulillah, uh, my musallah, you know, it's, alhamdulillah, you can, you can speak about it. Most of the places, you know, are shut down. You can go to Jumu'ah now. Isn't that the loss? That is real loss. Allah says, whoever, this is, this is, this should be the mentality of our, uh, of every one of us. That dhikrullah, losing dhikrullah is, is, is losing, you know, th- you know, millions, right? And Allah says, you know, and when we think about essential work, oh, COVID, only essential work is allowed. Isn't, tell me guys, isn't salah an essential work for us? For a believer, isn't that an essential thing? How essential is salah in our life? How essential is dhikrullah, dhikrullah? How essential is good companionship? Right? And that is what should really eat us from inside. That we can go for hajj. We can, we can remember Allah in gatherings. This is the real loss. فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ Right? The people who miss out on dhikr, the who miss out on Prophet Sallallahu forgiveness, they are the real losers. Right? So Allah says, the next ayah, وَأَنْفِقُوا so the first cure is remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next, Allah says, وَأَنْفِقُوا Second cure is spend. Okay? وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ فَيَقُولَ رَبِّي لَوْ لَا أَخَرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجْلٍ قَرِيبٍ فَأَصَّدَّقَ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the cure you're looking for the cure. Allah says, spend. This is the second thing. Spend from whatever we have. Ma is a mausul. It's general. Whatever we have given you, provided for you. What has Allah provided us? Allah has provided us time. And you will understand the importance of time towards the end of this ayah. When this person says, Ya Allah, please, please, please. Just give me one second. I'm going to go do some. You know, just do some sadaqah. Let me just give me like two minutes, Ya Allah, I'm going to pray two rakah quickly. When you, you will understand the value of time when it's too late. So spend from whatever Allah has given you. I gave you time, free time. I gave you money. Instead of buying movies online, buying entertainment sets and all that, I gave you money for the khair. I gave you talent. I gave you skills. I gave you strengths. I gave you a lot of things. I gave you authority. I gave you power. I gave you position. I give you a lot of things. Whatever Allah has given you, use that for Allah's cause. Use it for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Show me something. Allah says, come forth. You know, in, in Tabuk, Allah says, come forth, give whatever you have, small or big. Right? You're standing in the battle, in the battlefield, you are short, and you see the guy next to you so tall. Oh my God, I, I can't I can't do what this guy can do. I said, I don't care. I gave you the height. I gave you your height. I gave you his height. You show me what you can. And he will do what he, whatever your capacity is, whatever you have, give me. Okay. Whether you're giving $10 in charity or you're giving a million dollars in charity. Because you only have $11. You give $10. That's more valuable to Allah than a billionaire's million dollar. Perspective. I don't, I don't, I'm not looking for the quantity. Come forth and spend even if it's cents, even if it's just two minutes, whatever you can give. And fiqu, this is a cure, right? If you, rem- if you, if you remember the first, um, first lecture on, you know, the two kinds of believers, one is striving, right? Striving and moving forward. The other is just stagnant, just wants to be a bare minimum, just a Muslim. And then you have on the other side, the hypocrites and the, and the, and the disbelievers. So the more, the more you strive and push yourself towards this side, you'll be away from hypocrisy. This is a cure, right? Allah says, and the Prophet says in the hadith, um, you know, charity obliterates, destroys mistakes like water extinguishes fire. Charity 
gets rid of your mistakes, just like water extinguishes fire. Allah is saying that you may have this disease inside you, this hypocrisy because of which you have committed a lot of mistakes. If you want to cure yourself from that and get rid of those mistakes, what should you do? You need to give charity, right? Give in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just money, but anything you can. Give from whatever Allah has provided you min qabli an yatiya before death comes to you, before death comes to one of you, right? Yatiya ahadakum al maut, right? Before before it's too late, before death comes comes to you, right? So the remedy to hypocrisy is two things, dhikrillah and sadaqah. These are the things that will clean a person's heart from hypocrisy. Looking at the Arabic a little bit closer, uh, Subhan, if you can move to the Arabic, inshallah. Um, so here Allah says, mimma razaqakum allahu, right? Allah says, spend from, from min, right? He uses the word min here. I'm not, a, min is for tabi'eeds, right? I don't want your entire money. I don't want all of your time. I just need a little bit of your money. A little bit of your time. Mimma razaqakum allahu. Little bit, just not, not much. Razaqakum allahu. Right? If you notice that, right? Mimma razaqakum allahu. And then Allah says here, ahadakum al Right? Spend from, from the little that Allah has given you before death comes to one of you. Why does Allah say ahadakum al Why not just say maut? Before maut comes to you. Why say one of you? To show that death will come to every single one of you. And you can hide. When death comes to you, you can you can have a junna to you know a junna right a shield right protection like the hypocrites are bringing excuses and lame excuses and you know, to prevent themselves a shield to protect them from this. Allah says when death comes, ahadakumul maut, it will come to every single one of you. No one can stop it. Min qabl, min qabl is to show. Allah didn't say qabl. It says min qabl to show that right before death, okay, that you need to spend. Right before that, meaning death is right close to you. It's right there. You need to spend before death comes to you. And here's an interesting expression. Allah says, before death comes to you. You guys see that? Allah doesn't say before you die. It's not before you die. قبل أن تموت. No. قبل أن يأتي أحدك. Before death comes to you. What is the difference between death coming to you and you dying? The difference is that death is like, imagine... Imagine like a friend who's visiting you and he's making stops, okay? He's making different stops, right? Maybe he stops at Frankfurt, he stopped at, you know, I don't know, London and then stopped at, you know, somewhere in Toronto. Like, you know, he's making different stops. It's like, imagine that friend is death and that death is coming to you. It's making stops. And every, you know, day that passes by, your clock is ticking. Every gray hair is a sign death is coming. And yet the ahadakum al you understand? Right? Your bodily changes, changes in your body, right? You can't eat like the way you used to eat before, right? You can't run like the way you used to eat, you used to run before, right? You don't have the strength, you don't have the memory like you had before. Every sign, every you, you became a teenager, that's a sign, right? You became a dad, that's a sign, right? You are heading, and death is actually coming to you, it's getting closer, the flight is getting closer and closer to you, and that's death. You know what? Every birthday is a sign that death is coming to you. When you hit your, you know, the day of your birth, right? The birthday, what is that? Oh my God, death is closer to me now. You should, be, should you be celebrating or should you be worried? Oh my God, I have not purified my heart yet. I'm still a hypocrite. I need to work on myself. Should I need to spend more. You see that? And fiqu, I need to spend because death is coming to me. This is a, this is a Muslim mentality. The Prophet used to fast on Mondays because he was born on Monday. This is his mentality because this is the day. It reminds me that I'm getting closer to my death or death is coming to me. Allah says, when spend before, uh, spend from whatever Allah has given to you before death comes to each one of you. And at that point, what will happen? Yaqul, Rabbi, Rabbi, the Ya is removed to show urgency. My Rabb, my Rabb, Ya Allah, please. Yaz or Ya Harf Nida, like it should be Ya Rab. But Allah says, Ya Rab. No, the Ya is removed, right? Rabd immediately. Rabbi, Laula Akhartani ila Ajilin Qareeb. Why don't you give me some time? Ya Allah, why don't you just give me a little bit of time for us sadaq? I'm going to do some sadaqa wa akum mina salihin and I will be among the righteous people, right? What is that? Low, so let's go a little bit in depth. Laula, Allah says, Allah could have said, Low even. Laula is to show, show desperation. 
right? Basically saying an akhartani is is emphasized, right? Me, give time for me. So in simple, simple English, this is what the expression is. When death comes to one of you, so spend from what Allah has given to you before death comes to one of you. When death comes, you will say, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, please, please, just give me some time. Just two minutes, Ya Allah, I'm going to pray to Raka. Just, just give me, Ya Allah, please, just make an exception for me. Akhartani. Ya, ya Allah, I know, day of, I know death has come, but just for me only, Ya Allah, please, please. That's the expression. This is what the, the person is begging. Ajrin Qareeb. Ajrin Qareeb means little time. I don't need much time, Ya Allah. I need a little bit of time. You know what this shows? That to please Allah, what Allah asks from us is not much. He only asked, He only demanded a little bit of your time. Right? 24 hours you have for yourself. Just a little bit. Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Right? Short. Very short. Dhikr, entire thing, three hours. Everything combined, max. Right? This is what Allah is asking from you. Your salah, your dhikr, your jihad in fi sabilillah. Very little Allah is asking from you, right? And so this person, when death comes, he says, Ya Allah, I, I know I only need a few minutes because I know that's all you ask for. You see that? Today, Allah is saying, spend from what Allah has given you. Allah has given you time, guys. You and me have time. Make use of your time. Do not sit in front of the screen and watch. Has no benefit. You should be people who give, not take. You won't be consumers anymore. Ajlin qareeb fa'as-saddaq. He says, if you give me time, Ya Allah, what will I do? First thing, immediately I get a chance, I'm going to give charity. As-sadaqa also means to be truthful. Sadaq, it comes from sadaq. That means what the other understanding is that this time I'm going to spend genuinely, truthfully, like not to show off, not so that I can get respect or junnatun, right, to protect that I have donated this much, you know, how could you say this to me? I'm they, nothing. I'm actually giving it sincerely for as Right, and a little bit of Arabic here. as it should be at It's family number five. There should be a tie there, right? at but the tie is removed, right? To show what I'm gonna give quickly. as immediately I'll give because it's shortened. When you shorten the syllables, it's faster too. as give quickly. And the dal has a shadda, right? When you have shadda, it shows mubalagha, hyperbole, right? Family five has repetition too. Shows that I'm gonna give you a lot. So as shows two things. I will give quickly. And I'm going to give a lot. I'm going to give a lot. Ya Allah, just give me two minutes. Immediately. The fa over there also shows. Subhan, move up to the ayah, inshallah. Uh, if you have the ayah posted there. There you go. Perfect. So immediately. And just highlight the things I'm saying for the, for the you know, people who are not Arabic students. You know? So fa immediately, Ya Allah, I will give. So Allah is saying the cure to hypocrisy is what? Giving. Right, and that's when, uh, and and this shows that this person already has hypocrisy in him, right? Because when when death came, he realized, oh my God, I am not, I am not there yet, so I should give sadaqa. الصالحين, and he says at the end, if you give me time, ya Allah, I'm also going to become righteous. I'm going to fix myself. Salih, Salih, from the grade six students were there. Salih, someone who fixes themselves, right? I'm going to fix myself. Okay, Muslim is someone who fixes others. Salih is someone who fixes himself, right? All these time, this hypocrite was blaming others. He was trying to fix others. Look at you. You, you are a hypocrite. You are a hypocrite. Look at you. You, 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 you. He kept blaming others. Oh, it's not me. It's all because of my mom. My, you know, this thing happened. Oh, it's all because of my parents. It's all because of that person. My life is ruined, right? Is is you? You're the cause, right? Husband blames the wife. Wife blames the husband. You, 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 you. That's the quality of a hypocrite. Finally, he understands, I, sh I should be blaming myself. I will be, I will become righteous. I know, I was wrong. Allah says, when death comes to one of them, he will say, my Rabb, let me go back so that I can do righteous deeds. Right? This is the, this is the ayah. Final ayah, inshallah, uh, of this surah. Allah says, Allah says, And Allah is not going to delay. Allah is not going to 
delay the uh, a time when the time comes. Meaning Allah says when the time comes, there is no chance of going back. Allah is fully aware of what you all do. Allahu khabirum bima ta'malun. Allah, when the time comes, there is no chance to go back. There is no going back. When the time comes, this is it. This is it. Right? And so Allah says, khabirum bima ta'malun. Allah is fully aware of whatever you do. Just from... I just want to give you a small, small example uh, to help you understand this. Okay, a teacher, a teacher knows a student in and out, right? And there is, there are some students the teacher knows that he's not going to do the homework, right? You just know this person, no matter what you do, he's not going to do the homework. And so he brings an excuse one time, uh, uh, you know, brother Junaid, you know, I, I didn't do this, I didn't do this work. I'm sorry. Okay, and you as a teacher say, okay, um, you're getting a zero. And there's no, no, please give me a chance. Please give me a chance. You as a student having, you know, taught him for so many years, you know, this person is not going to do it. And say, no, I know you. I know you're not going to do it. My, please, 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 brother, please, please, I beg you, please give me some time. Final, I, I will do it for sure. For sure, I'll do it. Right? Just give me two more days. Okay, fine. You give two more days. Guess what? After two days. Uh, actually, I was almost done. But then, you know, as I was submitting it, you know, it just didn't save. Please, 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 I, I bl just, just two more hours, I'm going to get it done. After two hours, mm -mm, it's not happening. Some students, you just know the person in and out based on what? Experience. That this, no matter what you tell them, these people are not going to do it. Okay? It's based on experience, I know the person. That's why I'm not going to give him extra time. Okay? So, the word for experience in Arabic is khibra. Experience is what? Khibra. And what does Allah say? Wallahu khabirun bima ta'malun. Allah is fully aware of whatever they do. Meaning that Allah is saying that I know you. I know what you're up to. Like as a teacher, I may not know the student in and out, but the Prophet, Allah says that he knows this person in and out. Khabir. Allah knows. No matter how much time I give you, you're saying, please give me two minutes. I'm going to fix my life. You think that's going to happen? Think about what happens when you get sick. When you get sick, if only I get better, I'm gonna, you know, I'll be a different person. When you are terminally ill and you Allah gives you life, some miracle happens and you come back to life, you say, I'm gonna be a different person. What happens after that? You are the same. Ramadan, you make yourself, you, you tell yourself, I'm gonna be a different person, back to the same. Allah says, Allah knows you in and out. You think Allah will give you time? When the when death comes, there is no giving time. Because Allah is what? Khabir. Allah is fully aware of what you do. Ta'malun Ta shows that Allah knows your present and Allah knows your future. A teacher might know the student's present and the past, but may not know the future. Allah says, I already know what your future will be too. It could be some, because I just know it really well. Allah knows the straight seat of our hearts. So every single one of us, including myself, need to have some introspection from today's class. What am I going to take away from this? Right? I have this inside me, this asymptomatic Disease, hypocrisy, maybe symptomatic, right? I know I have a symptomatic disease that I can clearly see inside me. Every one of you, every one of us need to see that within ourselves. And what do I do to stop myself? What do I do to stop myself from getting distracted? What can I do to stop myself from dhikr Allah? Throw your phones away. Have a room for your for the worship. And if masajids, if you know, a small masalas, whatever it is, it's open, you can go, go for salah. This is the best way to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the men. Go. And, and you can claim, you can claim to be a da'i, a worker of deen, and not get up for tahajjud, and not go for salah to the masjid. You don't, your salahs are not fixed. Your dhikrillah is not there. Whatever you say is just hypocrisy. Right? Allah knows you really well. When the time comes, it will be too late. Do not let yourself get distracted and have a giving hand. Learn to give and give and give and stop counting. Stop being obsessed by your, by your money. Right? And remember, izza comes from Allah. Don't depend on people for izza. Right? These are the qualities. And stop having two faces. When something is wrong, say it. This is wrong. Stand up for what is right. Right? And don't make jannatun. Don't make excuses. Don't use things as, 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 as a shield. Right? Because Allah is khabir. You can't make excuses. Allah knows you in and out. 
You can bring excuses like the way you bring excuses to your teacher or to a leader saying that, oh, I can't do the work of Dean because I have this thing to do, that thing to do, right? You can't. You can't bring your children as an excuse to say that, you know, I'm too occupied day and night. I don't get time for this class or to do anything else because I'm just, you know, too, like there's so much community service that needs to be done. Community work, da'wah needs to be done, right? Where are we, right? And a lot of people, and there's also a hypocritical mentality. A lot of people think that, oh, I am bad, I know, but Allah is rahim, you know? Allah is merciful. Allah is, you know, Allah is forgiving. He will take care of me. You know, and, and, and this, Allah is only merciful to your past mistakes. You can use Allah's mercy for your present and future mistakes. I'm going to do this wrong right now. I'm, going to, I'm doing this wrong. I'm going to continue doing this wrong and bring Allah's rahim. Allah is only rahim for the people in the, for, for the past. You can't use that to justify your mistakes. That is hypocrisy. That is a hypocrite. Okay. Junnatun an sabilillah. Right. an sabilillah. This is what it is. Right. So um, do not, you know, do not let this happen. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He protects us from nifaq, He purifies our hearts from nifaq, from hypocrisy, and He gives our children, you know, a pure heart, inshallah, and He gives us the ability to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives us the ability to remember the Quran, to take Quran seriously, to take salah seriously, that we take our athkar seriously, inshallah, and be, be in the good company, and that we spend whatever we can in the, in the, in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that we become among those people who say, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَىٰ جَنُوبِهِمْ For those of you who attended the girls' halaqa this week, these were the ayat, I know, uh, Sister Zainab talked about, that they, those who remember Allah standing, sitting on their sides, this is what we have to become like. People who remember Allah, do not like remove all the distractions, you know, from your, from your sight. So, I mean, I mean, I mean, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to give us a tawfiq to inshallah implement on these ayat and that we stay connected um, uh, to, to, to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will be having monthly halaqas like this uh, you know uh, going forward girls halaqas as well as boys halaqa to keep this this uh, you know iman fresh in our hearts barakallahu lana wa lakum fil quran hakim wa nafa'na wa iyyakum bil ayati wa dhikr hakim just one second brother janad Okay, uh, yes, Ibad. Um, uh, I didn't finish writing, I'm just writing the last eye of Surah Manafi. Kwan, can you share that again, please? Yes, for sure. I can, uh, Subhan, please share that eye of this. Okay, so just um, some um, lessons you might have learned, inshallah, I want to ask you guys what you have learned. I want to share some things, maybe some things you came to your mind that I did not share. Um, you're more than welcome to share, inshallah. Anyone want to share a lesson? Anything you learned? <clears throat> Okay, should I start picking people, inshallah? All right, just three lessons maybe. Okay, overall. Um, how about uh, our dear brother, uh, Faraz? Uh, email list for halaqa reminders. Uh, yes, yes. So um, what I recommend uh, everyone is to just put your emails, inshallah, in the chat box. And if I can ask subhan, inshallah, just copy the emails, we can add all of you guys to the halaqa email list um, and you can get the reminders for both and even the recordings and everything like that, okay? Okay, so for us, go ahead, bismillah, jazakallah khair. Gonna have to speak louder. Okay, Ibad, are you done with the lesson? Okay, good. Uh, Faraz, you gonna share? 
Um, uh, something that I learned is that the hypocrite isn't the one that, uh, what do you call it, asks if they are the, um, a believer. Yeah, I know your mom is helping you out. Yeah, mashallah. Uh, anyways, what I, what I was saying is that uh, the believer is one who asks if they are the ones being, uh, what do you call it, uh, targeted. If there's like a bunch of people being targeted, they ask if they are one, fearing that they are actually one. Instead of, and the hypocrites are the ones who are the opposite and ask who else is on the list so that they can insult them. Very good. Very good, mashallah. Good. Jazakallah khair. Uh, one more lesson, one more lesson, inshallah. Yes, Ibad. I learned that, um, that like, like Sister Nasreen also, when we were having our Quran with her, you explained that, like, um, like, uh, like there are different gods sometimes, but you should only believe in one god. Like, video game is a god. Like, when you're not praying prayer and you're like too busy and you're sleeping and you're playing video games, doing and then uh, prayers passing, that's your god for that moment. And every time when you keep on when a uh, prayer passes and you're doing something more important than prayer, which is actually not important, that's your god basically for now. Mashallah, mashallah. Very good. Excellent, Ibad. Right? The tulhikum, right? Do not get distracted. So prayer is important, but you're getting distracted by that prayer and doing something that's less important, right? Very good playing. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. I'm going to conclude, inshallah. Um, just want to uh, share a few things for um, for the people here. Uh, if you just want to go through the programs, um, uh, just the, all of that is an effort to dhikrillah, right? Uh, the first program we have is the Quran Tafsir program, which is just these, these halaqat recordings. And we have the Youth Quran Tafsir that happens on Fridays. You can check it up on the website, inshallah. Uh, the Full Time Islamic, the Weekend Islamic School. Right, um, happens on Sundays, uh, pure Islamic studies. And these are mainly for students who go to public schools. Um, and then full-time Islamic school is uh, the school that Ibad is in and other uh, students here, alhamdulillah. Uh, that's from uh, Montessori to grade eight. And you have the summer program, youth camp, March break, Quranic Arabic 101, uh, 102, 103. These are all Arabic programs for adults. Okay, uh, just from starting from the basics and moving up. And then there's also Quran Tajweed program, this uh, sister's program, we can check it out. So these are some of the programs, inshallah, I just want to um, uh, bring to your attention uh, for anybody who's interested, inshallah. So, um, and the girls' halaqa schedule, uh, Subhan, if you can share that. Okay, Sakallah khair. And that's the schedule for the next halaqa sessions you can take note of. These are tentative, but we will be confirming uh, through the emails, inshallah. Okay, the next session is happening on the 10th of February. Uh, that's the girls' halaqa. And this halaqa uh, for everyone will be on the 24th of February, inshallah. And we will be sending you guys the Quranic du'as and the Masnoon du'as for you to keep, you know, um, uh, keep yourself busy in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Jazakallah khairan. Let's end with a quick du'a. Subhanallah, he will be handy, he added the Hulki, he would you don't have seen he was in a tower, she he will be dead the Kalimati. Allah, who must only Allah, Muhammad, you wala, early Muhammad, come also later, Allah, Ibrahim, or Allah, early Ibrahim, in Naka Hamidum Majid, Allah, who Mabarik, Allah, Muhammad, you wala, early Muhammad, come a barok, Allah, Ibrahim, or Allah, early Ibrahim, in Naka Hamidum Majid. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم طهر قلوبنا من النفاق وأعمالنا من الرياء وأموالنا من الربا وألسنتنا من الكذب وأعيننا من الخيانة فإنك تعلم خائنة الأعين وما تخفي الصدور اللهم طهر قلوبنا من النفاق يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك 
يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما رب رحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين واحم هوزة الإسلام يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر دينك وكتابك وسنة نبيك وعبادك الموحدين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت سمي العليم وتبع علينا إنك أنت تواب الرحيم أزاكم الله خيلا See you guys inshallah in the next halaqah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.